Well, hello, SIGGRAPH. My name is Nicholas Paulus. I'm the Director of Visual Computing at Virginia Tech and the elected president of the Web3D Consortium. Um, it's a real treat to have a little time with you today to talk about some of the things we've been up to in the last year, but also uh, you may have heard a little bit about us as a land-grant university. Uh, we provide computing and visualization services to all kinds of disciplines and departments and stakeholders around the Commonwealth of Virginia. And so I'd like to start um, a little bit with a story since our topic here today is uh, Web 3D Metaverse and a little bit of that inspiration um, from the early days. Um, and my first SIGGRAPH was 2000. So uh, I remember all this excitement very well. And as you can see, we have a lot of the key essential ingredients of uh, what people think of as a metaverse today. That is uh, URLs and web addresses, places to go on the network where you would find uh, other people, uh, objects, all kinds of things that were created um, really in some of the first commercial platforms and with tens of thousands of users, Colony City, Cybertown uh, being some of those. And you can see some examples um, of a few screenshots from, from back then, all built on VRML. And then we had a, a real fun uh, time, you know, the possibilities swelled um, and then the pocketbooks uh, companies did as well. Unfortunately, many of them didn't make it through uh, the hype cycle. And um, we can see, looking back at history, actually uh, just a trail of, of dead bodies, the dead technologies, right, that um, are littering the way of where every, uh, every one of these companies thought they were going to own the metaverse, right? And so they weren't about playing well with others. They were about locking you in. And unfortunately, that was not a business model that uh, could scale for the federal government. And uh, so a few of those great initiatives, while some impressive technologies were developed, um, a very few of those or none of those locations uh, survive today. Now, in contrast, um, I built my first world in 1998 in VRML. And uh, the, you can see we're using humanoid animation characters. We're down at the Giza Plateau. We've pulled the elevation from geotiffs and satellites. This was exciting in uh, you know, the days of 288 modems and uh, before graphics cards. And um, so we distributed that um, for a couple of years, multimedia, audio, video embedded in this world, various adventures uh, in the pyramids. And uh, in fact, the same file uh, runs in my 27 and a half million stereo pixel cave at Virginia Tech in the Visionarium Lab. So there you can see it um, without a, a hint of bit rot there. Um, all the interactions, the lighting, the scripting uh, works just as we had designed it uh, in 98. So that's just testament to the power of standards and kind of why we're here. Um, and then we... Uh, several colleagues and I, we invested and worked on geospatial pipelines and web 3D visualization, produced several papers and, and a, a platform we call X3D Blacksburg. And once you bring together, you know, the town data, the university data, the state data, um, and even um, user created data, like our architecture students, maybe pulling some uh, 3D models of buildings, you can do a lot with it. Right, you ha you have now a, a platform, a base map, if you will, and layers that can enable all kinds of applications, and that's the kind of thing we love to do here at Virginia Tech. So here you can see in the bottom right, excuse me, um, a uh, a picture of you know your classic multi-user world. We put 3D Blacksburg um, online, and you have avatars and chat features, and I'll talk all about that in a second. So yeah, starting out with um, having a, a common mirror world where you could reflect events and shared state amongst distributed participants uh, was really exciting. And um, so we had built, as I said, Blacksburg in 3D. And here you can see a picture of it uh, on the open source Deep Matrix um, 
multi-user server. So it's basically I'm using a Java client to do all of the chats and the um, management of the scene, but that's X3D and instant reality running as the renderer. Uh, we could we tried that same world in another server and client that's also an X3D platform, uh, Bit Management or uh, Blackson Collaborate. And so here's another sort of example of, you know, the technology of the greatest common denominator um, has really uh, been a huge value for us uh, over the years. 3D Blacksburg has let us do lots of cool stuff with uh, site visits, right? Remote visits, um, also even creating new parts of our town to uh, around design and planning, and then walking through those simulations um, and discussing them uh, in various kinds of forums and uh, facilitations. So 3D Blacksburg is, has, been, uh, has been really fruitful for us. Started to push into new kinds of media types and ideas. So we had a, a collaboration with uh, Sermini in the art department and her students talking about how a sculpture situates in its environment and the sorts of dialogues that can happen. So yes, um, we took a, an X3D sculpture and put it all around the world, including Mars. And uh, the class uh, really got a lot out of that experience. So imaginary places, real world places, these kind of cross over um, a lot when we think about the metaverse. Um, so I'd like to share a couple of examples of maybe more like production um, applications from Virginia Tech and using Web3D technologies. Um, this is a training course for the U.S. Forest Service for their professional certifications. And it's typically a two-week intensive on-site uh, training uh, for the forestry professionals uh, to learn about different kinds of management practices, to understand and learn about different kinds of forest succession types, soils, all of the sorts of things. Unfortunately, the pandemic uh, really put a stop to that, uh, the travel anyway. And so we pivoted and uh, with my colleagues in forestry, we put together the an online component for these site visits uh, for their silviculture program. And as you can see, it's a, it's a HTML5 uh, interface with uh, linked maps and uh, data tables from each of the surveys, as well as 360 photospheres um, with the various uh, trees captured. So we're giving sort of overview and context um, for the foresters as they're learning about and making their management plans for these different sites. Incidentally, they never could have visited all the different ecosystems in two weeks. Um, we went from Maine uh, to Florida and through Appalachia and New York. So uh, they really got an exposure of different types of forests that they couldn't have physically in that time. So we wrote up a few things about that in last year's uh, Web3D conference and I encourage interested folks to check that out and, and give us feedback. It's really exciting to see, you know, a lot of these um, also commodity devices like capturing data. And so we started to think a lot about how we could use um, this new kinds of data types 360 degree photos, 360 videos, um, in different kinds of ways. And so last spring, I had the pleasure to teach our senior capstone in human computer interaction. And one of our project teams was interested in, these are teams of four, uh, interested in uh, working with Struble's Creek, our local watershed, and increasing you know, environmental awareness and, and stewardship of this watershed, which is the reason the town and the college is here in the first place. So they worked through a whole series of user-centered prototyping and evaluation and um, came up with, started to build some different kinds of information and interaction design for Struble's tours. So some of the things you can see they're kind of working with in their wireframing here and HTML5, CSS, JavaScript, um, galleries, of uh, at each of these locations, right? There might be a whole series of images and videos related to that uh, particular uh, spring. It's historical significance, it's ecological significance. 
And here's Professor Hessian uh, explaining to us, uh, you know, which way the river flows. Um, just as a fun, try it out sort of concept, you know, to see sort of where we can start um, when we think about prototyping and new sorts of designs. Well, if HTML5 and X3D are your user interface, you have a huge palette available. And that's really what we tried to encourage um, the students here. But here you can, I just wanted to share um, the old QR code. If you, uh, you know, snap that one and head over there, you'll get to one of these prototype tours. Um, the, uh, there's up in the upper left, there's a start demo button. So, okay, so when it loads, you can swipe around and look um, look around the video sphere. Uh, but also if you start the demo, then it will turn on the gyro and you'll be looking through the phone at different angles, right? So just another sort of place of where, you know, physical realities, virtual realities, metaverses make these intersections and i have really fun thing to explore um, so the students got to build off on that there's another um, fun project uh, i'd like to share again this is undergraduates uh, seniors in human computer interaction uh, they started to think about the metaverse and the sorts of activities that people would uh, do there right and so they ran a survey and found um a bunch of interest in sort of virtual parties and watching parties and gathering. And they also noticed uh, from our Mirror Worlds fusality work uh, with the Moss Art Center that we could think about how to sort of blend the experiences of an art gallery in an online metaverse type of environment. So they started to do different kinds of designs uh, using our fusality server. It's just a you no know, JavaScript um, simple subscription model, right? And started to prototype the ideas about, um, you know, proximity chat and how things might uh, lay out. So I just wanted to share maybe a few um, minutes from this. So, you know, here's the art gallery, some arts loaded down here. You can see this particular world they loaded is the Sponza um, GLTF model. Here's a, here's a cat, right? We have multimedia in the world. This deer here on the right is an avatar. <laughs> right, so viewpoints around the different pieces of art. Uh, they thought how interesting it would be to sort of make notes as they were going through and save them so that if after the visit, you could review that. And here they're looking at, you know, seeing who's online and uh, starting proximity chats with them. Let's see, there's one talk privately with users. So they prototyped all of this um, from their user-centered design process uh, in a matter of weeks, um, again, using HTML5 and X3D. So let's stop that. So this is one of the reasons why we're involved with the Web3D Consortium, right, is that it's such a great benefit of the accessibility of the open technologies and our students. So a quick reflection um, as you've probably seen, you know, a lot of the technologies that are needed to make up the metaverse have been around for a while. And I'm specifically speaking of ISO standards like X3D and VRML. Um, all that stuff is true from our tutorial in, in 2011. Um, I'd like to add a few things with the benefit of um, time now. Right, so it is really great that we have WebGL and we have uh, seeing the demand and value of 3D in all kinds of industries and markets, right? But there's still a lot of, hey, that's not invented here, or there's just maybe not a lot of awareness about what's happening in other industries. Uh, uh, X3D has been able to, over these years, to position itself at that kind of sweet spot where, yeah, you have a JPEG, you have a GLTF, that's all great. How do you light it? What's how does it interact with it? You know, um, and it turns out that uh, none of the um, specifications require that it be uh, a mouse click. Right? It can be multi-touch. It can be head trackers, uh, wand controllers. All of this is uh, is living in the standard, right? So I guess um, 
probably the biggest thing is not really about the technology is my argument here would be it's more about the people, uh, humans, right? Noisy, uh, messy stuff. But, you know, these a lot of these are born out of the harsh lessons of Web 2.0, right? Customize it all. Track me. Recommend <laughs> me something, right? So is the metaverse going to be just another ad tracking environment? I think people are rightfully concerned about that. Is it going to be things that, are there going to be many of them for each of my things that work? Because I've already got a full life of places to be. Um, so, you know, is this a general purpose thing or specialized to different tasks? How do I move in between these uh, modes of being in the metaverse? And of course, as my other colleagues uh, here in the consortium um, will say, it's security and safety are probably the biggest things. As you said, it's not technology. It's, it's my data protected, my avatar, right? Can I remove myself at any time? Think about the blue button for the metaverse, your health record, right? What about the social rules of engagement? I mean, uh, in the first five minutes of meta, right, they had to, uh, they had a sexual assault and had to implement a whole new rule set. So people maybe aren't really ready to um, fulfill some of the visions that um, the technology folks are, are pushing. And I just wanted to continue that conversation with you and the SIGGRAPH community as we go forward and really make something positive. All right. So I'm going to um, now move on. And uh, I have the great honor and privilege of uh, presenting another Web3D members work. I'm going to start off this video, which is going to be on another screen. Oops, I'm going to stop the video and we'll do mic separate. All right. Thanks again. Hope to talk with you soon online.